independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Just a little bit. Just come on. Just honest. Let's. Come on. I'm sitting there watching this yesterday and I'm like, is he? Is he talking about disinfecting people? <laughs> and light? Is he talking about light? <laughs> is, 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 is he talking about UV light? Like the movie Blade? That's how they kill the vampires? It's like special UV bullets? Is, is, is this what he's talking about? Special UV? I would like you to speak to the medical doctors to see if there's any way that you can apply light and heat to cure. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Again, I say maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor, but I'm like a person that has a good, you know what. Have you ever heard of that heat and the light? That is a treatment. I mean, certainly fever is a good thing when you have a fever. It helps your body respond. I think it's a great thing to look at. I'm like a person that has a good, you know what, okay? (laughs) to say with that and here's the problem you go and you look at all the trends and the google and and twitter and people are like trying to figure out what was what what could we do and oh my god i just i thought to myself self just really 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 this is this what we're all about i don't watch these to get much out of them because we we know what's coming out of them first of all you can't keep a secret anywhere anymore in in politics secondly because you have one of these every single day and that's all that anybody's talking about on every news channel everywhere there's nothing new that comes out of it what about the heat right like take away the craziness what about the heat side of it well the heat We've known that. These things are seasonal. Heat kills a lot of things. That's why they tell you to wash your hand in warm water. So, uh, you know, the heat and di- that stuff we get. We understand. <laughs> Light. Hey, producer Phil, if your doctor came to you and said, I'm going to shoot you up with Clorox bleach and then we're going to stick you under a UV thing, would you be like, you know what? I think I'm going to leave. I think I'm going to find another doctor. I think so. I don't think you're qualified, sir. I was waiting for go. Can we microwave people? Is that a possibility? Or would that be too much? <laughs> he said that. Of course, though, then the media has to react. Bleach and other disinfectants used to kill viruses on surfaces and in your kitchen. Doing anything with that internally, it just, doctors, right. what, what, what do you make? And they also said it, you know, it needs to be studied. Actually, it doesn't. We know the answer to this one. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things out there that we don't know the answers to and we need to investigate. But the idea that we would do a trial of some sort and inject some people with disinfectant and some people not and see what happens, I think everybody would know that that would be dangerous and, and counterproductive and, and not at all moving us in the right direction. Yeah. Have you read the back of those things, the poison control? Whether you drink it or inject it, it's not good for you. Whether you drink it or infect. So are you going to drink it or are you going to intravenously take this? Not good for you. And the fact that they have to also talk about the fact that don't do this because a lot of people get desperate. They're not the sharpest tools in the shed. You could call it Darwinism if something was to happen. You know, we already saw that earlier. What? When this pandemic broke, you had the couple out in Arizona that that took the the aquarium fish tank cleaner and consumed it. So there's a reason they put warning labels on stuff. There is. There's a reason they say, do not try this at home. I have friends who have YouTube channels, and they've got a ton of subscribers, and they're big reptile people. And they handle things like venomous snakes. And they put a huge warning on there, don't do this. This is what we do for a living. This is, you, there's a reason for that. Because people will go, well, I can just go grab any kind of snake I want. No. No, but it was surreal 
like he turns like have you have you thought about trying that have you thought about that and i also worry that there are a lot of people for whom president trump is the most trusted messenger and i really hope that people are not listening to what he said and thinking well maybe i should try this myself at home somebody will somebody will because people aren't bright they're not and She's right. He is the most trusted voice for a ton of people. New poll out today. AP NORC poll. Few Americans trust Trump's info on the pandemic. So you go and you look at this poll. Republicans, great deal and details. Do you trust Trump? 47% trust him big time. A moderate amount trust him and a little to no. Democrats, 7% trust him big time, and then it falls off. Out of all adults, only 23 trust him a great deal or quite a bit total. When you hear stuff like that, I'm sorry. That was that was just insane. That was. Well, Chad, how dare you? No. Because I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get a ton of text. Save it. Save it. Remember when you were a kid? And they would say to you, there's no dumb questions. (laughs) That was the one time where you go, that was a dumb question. (laughs) I like Dr. Gupta. No, we don't have to study it. We already know the answer to this. If you think that, because somebody's going to be stupid enough to go, well, maybe if I drink bleach or I do this or I do that, somebody, because they're desperate, they're scared. Part of that's the media and the insanity of it all with this. It's a death sentence. It's not a death sentence. All right. It's not. In saying that. That wasn't. The sharpest thing to say, I'm sorry, it wasn't. It was ridiculous. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. We're growing. When it comes to our death rates, that is absolutely true. We have now crossed a new big giant milestone. The number of coronavirus deaths in the U.S. has crossed 50,000, more than a fifth of them in nursing homes. Everybody has to lose their parents at some point. I don't want to lose her like this. Berna Lee's mother lives in a nursing home in Queens. All you really want is to be there for them, hold their hand, and kiss them goodbye. At the Center for Medicaid Services, Seema Verma told us the administration has done all it could. Everything that the Trump administration has done has been to increase accountability for nursing homes and to improve quality and safety. There have been at least 11,000 COVID deaths in nursing homes. And one of the things that we need to be talking about when it comes to the deaths is the at-risk side of things. We know that people in contained environments are really at risk. Prisons, factories where you're working side by side, and places like nursing homes. Pretty contained environment, so it spreads like wildfire. It's the reason that you look at places like New York, where while it's not a contained environment, people are moving about. It is contained in many ways where they're side by side. Places like Los Angeles, where when you look at L.A. and you look at California in general, they've got about 35,000 cases, give or take. But they've got a 40 million people that live there. It's a very wide open space in a lot of ways. Because everybody's in their car by themselves. They build out, not up. And the deaths that are happening in places like California, a majority of them are nursing homes. Even here yesterday, we 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 had a day where we had 20 deaths in Arizona. And I believe 13 of them were at nursing homes. So the elderly, people with underlying conditions, this is absolutely horrible. And when you get a situation where you have old people usually with multiple conditions, who happen to be in homes, nursing homes, or convalescent facilities, it's doubly horrible. These are the factors you've got to look at across the board. 
Very yeah, yesterday. And we're going to get a little bit more into this, but they New York Cuomo came out and said, "Look, one in seven New Yorkers have tested positive, essentially for the antibodies." They've just done some, you know, sample studies, but it's kind of the same thing what they're mimicking in places like California, where their studies have shown the same thing. Far more people have got this, which brings the death rate, the mortality rate down to something more deadly than the flu, but not the four and a half, five, eight, ten, twelve percent, depending on what country you're looking at, that this is. It just spreads much quicker. And it is more deadly for a certain group of people. But so would the flu be if somebody got it in certain situations. You know, an older person gets the flu and they've got underlying conditions and they're in a nursing home. That's going to be a big battle. So there's a lot that goes into this. As this thing starts to break down more and more, I think we're starting to see that While it's not as deadly, it does spread easier. So it's not as deadly as we thought. It does spread easier. And there is ways that we can take this thing on. And we're going to have to accept the fact there's a second wave coming. But I think more and more as we're starting to get some of these numbers, people are starting to say, and I'm hearing a lot of this, was this worth it? As we head towards 25% unemployment, potentially by the end of this month, but most likely easily in the first week of May, and who knows, maybe 30% unemployment, and several months or even years to build itself back up again. I think people are going to ask the question, which also makes it harder to lock down a second time if people start seeing certain numbers and say, you know, mm, no, no, I'm not going to do it. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. <laughs> it was so funny. It was, come on. You can't laugh at that. And there's so many people out there that are going to get mad. How dare you? You know what? No. Wrong. Sorry. That was asinine and idiotic. That was. Let's be real. I work with an amazing organization called Wounded Paw Project. And they are just awesome. They rescue dogs that would be euthanized, take them, train them from shelter to service for veterans, first responders, and their family. You get a lot of veterans who obviously we know struggle with injuries and PTSD, and these animals help them in several ways, including transitioning back into a normal way of life. But on top of that, they also do the same thing for our first responders and their families and right now they need your help. Now, there's several ways that you can help. You could go to smile.amazon.com and set your supporting group to Wounded Paw. You could also donate today by donating a vehicle, any kind of vehicle. If it flies or floats, they'll take it. Or you could even give cash as well. You can check out their entire story, but it is an incredible story, and the work they do is amazing. Go to woundedpawproject.org or call 844-678-4PAW, 844-678-4729, or woundedpawproject.org. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Okay, here we go. With the first pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Uh, oh, wait, am I bo- who are we booing? So, last night, surreal, bizarre. But ESPN and the NFL and everybody did a fairly decent job in the way they went about handling the draft. And I want to see, they're expecting huge ratings, and I think they're going to get huge ratings. I really, really think they're going to get massive ratings because there's nothing on. People are dying for any kind of new content. And I think they got a ton of it last night. I think the NFL did a good job. Now, Producer Phil, you and I are both football fans. Did you watch any of said draft? Actually, I didn't. Well, you missed out. So the bang, so so you've got the coaches 
that all are in their places. The owners and the GMs are in their places because it's all about social distancing. So the Bengals are the first pick. I'm painting a picture here. So the Bengals are the first pick. They're on the board. They've been on the board since the minute the season ended. They knew who they were picking. And so they've got cameras in all the wherever people are at. They've got, they sent out, like, I guess it was 200 camera kits to players that could be drafted. And so they had cameras in there. And the kids, you know, and the parents, everybody had to set them up. And they had a dress code. So the Bengals, the first pick. Zach Thomas, the coach of the Bengals, is kind of in this horrible blue jacket in what appears to be a courtyard by Marriott room (laughs) with like this bad kind of Bengals banner thing behind him set up. And I was like, wow. Wow. And then you go, it was really bad. Then you go to the other side, and Jerry Jones is in this room that is all white. It is completely opulent. I mean, and it is just, he's sitting there in this giant white couch. It was so surreal. I put a picture up of the Bengals coach and the coach out here, Cliff Kingsbury, who's in his home in Scottsdale. He's sitting there, and it has got, giant windows that like open up and I'm talking about you know 15 20 foot windows and then it's got a courtyard with like grass and in between the grass it's the concrete and it's got a fire pit out there and it it looks like he's in a some sort of magazine and then then there's the Bengals and there's a reason you guys are the Bengals when you're staying at the courtyard by Marriott (laughs) it's just surreal oh my lord 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. It's Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I would like you to speak to the medical doctors to see if there's any way that you can apply light and heat to cure. You know, if you could. And maybe you can, maybe you can't. Again, I say maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor. He's not a doctor. He's not. Some of the craziness yesterday, and there's craziness, too, on, like, social media. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs, and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that. So that- so you heard what he said there, right? You, we, we all heard the injection. So this is some of the craziness on our Facebook page. So sad. He never mentioned that. What's wrong with this country? Get rid of all these leftist, stupid journalists. Fake and twisted facts. This is ridiculous. He did not say that people should do this. He said doctors were exploring something like this. You're a typical liberal. It's fake news. The press has no integrity. Ignore these morons. Another misleading statement. He did not suggest you drink Lysol or bleach. No, he said he says maybe you can look into that. Well, he did say maybe you, not like he was going to look into it. But come on. I was telling producer Anthony before the show started, I said people in my business are now having to run around and try to figure out, okay, is uh, how, how do we spin this? How do we spin? Like, how do I spin this? And, and I'm like, I talked to a couple of my buddies who do this on a very large level as well. And I'm like, 
You don't. You just come out. I couldn't do that. Why can't you do that? That's the beauty of the world that we live in. He's not Yahweh, right? He's not God. He's a human being. It was a stupid thing to say. When it comes to the business side of things, I listen to Trump all day. Right? When it comes to that business side of stuff, I listen to it. I listen to him. I like the way he's handled the, the business side of stuff. This was not his finest moment. Just wasn't. And it's crazy how you, you, like you have to agree with everything. That's the problem with the country right now. Is we can't have actual any kind of 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 conversation about real things that we disagree about without saying if you disagree about one thing then you throw everything away right it, you have to 100% be here i get it every day you have to pick a side i don't have to pick anything it's the beauty of the world that i live in it's the way the constitution is driven up i don't have it didn't say red or blue in the constitution I'm independent. When Trump does something good, I say it. When he does something bad or stupid, I'll say it. I'll call him out. I don't have to pick a side. I don't do any of that stuff. It's nuts. He said something stupid. People, you can laugh at it. It doesn't weaken him. That's the thing that people think. It somehow weakens him. Like, it, you should be... A, I want my president to succeed. Here's the funny thing. Those same people that tell me you should be behind our president, you should want him to succeed, absolutely I want him to succeed. And if it was Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, I'd want them to succeed. And if they did something stupid or 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 idiotic, I'd say it. But those same people, if it was another person that was president, would say all the same things that I've said right here, but hope for failure. That's not American. The people on the left who want him to fail, and there are plenty of them out there, that's not American. Wanting our president to fail is not something you should want. It's like wanting your pilot to crash the plane because you don't like your pilot. That's stupid. Well, I'll show you. You should want him to succeed. That's so sad, though. Fake news. He never said that. No, he said it. That's not real. Are you like, I, again, we, we have this conversation at least once a week. What I said and what you heard. What the president said and what you heard. And that's on both sides of the aisle. Yes, you can take things out of context. Trump wasn't suggesting that everybody go out and get bleach, Clorox, disinfectant, and shoot it up. But did he say, you guys should look into this? Injecting? Talk about light and stuff? Yeah, he did. He did. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. So today, Georgia, I thought Kemp would step back. I did. I thought he would step back a little bit from trying to open up Georgia, and Georgia's numbers are growing, and uh, there's going to be – and the weird thing is there's – I don't even know how many things are going to open up. I have no idea. Even Trump is not thrilled by it. I had a good talk with the governor of Georgia. I didn't like the fact that he's leaving certain things. I want the states to open more than he does, much more than he does. But I didn't like to see spas, beauty parlors at this early stage, nor did the doctors. Is that a correct statement, Deborah? I didn't like to see spas opening. I didn't like to see a lot of things happening. And I wasn't happy with it. And I wasn't happy with Brian Kemp. I wasn't at all happy. And I could have done something about it if I wanted to. But I'm saying let the governors do it. But I wasn't happy with Brian Kemp. I get that. Are some of them going to open? I think some of them will. Are some of them not going to open? I think there's going to be a lot of people that say no. 
people are worried. People are scared. People are also in a situation where they're not sure what to believe, what not to believe. You see somebody who's got a mask on and rubber gloves. Well, the rubber gloves aren't really, unless you're going to change your gloves every time, they're kind of useless. But there's a certain sense of safety that we think some of these things are going to bring us. Kind of like the TSA. Right? The TSA is a placebo effect. In your mind, you think, oh, well, I had to take my shoes off and put all my stuff here. But the, re- the reality is, is every year they do those studies and like 97% of things that shouldn't be on an airplane get by. And you're like, well, that's great. There's a certain sense that you see somebody with gloves and a mask on that somehow they're extra protected and maybe that's going to help. But you have so much information that contradicts other information and this information says that and this study over here says people don't know what to do. So then what they do is they don't do anything. And polls are starting to say, yeah, hold on a second. 72% of Americans think moving too quickly to loosen stay-at-home orders is a greater threat to the country than moving too slowly. This from a new ABC News Ipsos poll. Most Republicans and Democrats feel the restrictions are responsible, life-saving actions. 80% say if restrictions were lifted tomorrow, they are unlikely to go to public places that draw crowds. Which I could totally see. A lot of people are going to be worried about going to public places, even when we get to a point where we've got a a treatment that has shown to be very successful in mitigating the damage this does to 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 people's bodies and the amount of time that you're you you would be sick. And even then there is this psychological aspect that we've talked about on numerous occasions that Some people aren't going to feel really comfortable going out into crowds, sporting events, shopping malls, flying, doing those things until there's a vaccine. It's going to take a good portion, I think, of America to get back into the flow of getting out there and working it. That's 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 the psyche. And part of that is because we're inundated by the media 24 seven that this is the deadliest thing in the world. And you get it. It's over. It's done. You're not going to survive. Not. And that's untrue as well. That's very much untrue. And we're finding out as we look at this more and more that hold on a second. This isn't really as deadly as people thought. While it is still deadlier, remember it casts a wider net than the flu does. And yes, it's a little bit deadlier than the flu. But if we're starting to see the antibodies test come back and seeing the amount of numbers of people that may have already had this thing and never even knew they had it. That two, three, four percent you see as far as the, the death rate, mortality rate starts to shrink dramatically. And that's that's good news. That is. That is good news. How's that good news? Because somebody questioned that yesterday. I posted some on Twitter about this. And they're like, so should that make the people who are healthcare feel better that it's it, that it's, you know, only half of one percent as a, I'm like, as opposed to three or four percent? Yes, absolutely. That sh- they should feel better about that. We should all feel better about that. Do you want it to be 10 percent? Would that make you feel better? And for a lot of people, what they want is and you see this now if this thing turns out to be at the end of the day something that is only three you know point three percent is the mortality rate people are going to ask questions was it worth it the economy was it worth it this wasn't anything more than the flu no it was deadlier than the flu because of the reach it has In saying that, I understand why politicians flip certain things in certain ways and want you to look at it in a certain way, because it's going to help there politically. Because if you look up and this thing, you know, Trump, 
at the end of the day, take away the economy anymore. That doesn't nobody. Nobody minus Nancy Pelosi. Nobody's blaming Trump for the economy. Nobody is. He's going to be reelected or lose based on the next several weeks and months of how he handles this. We're we're over 50,000 now. How much longer is this going to go on? starting to get warmer. They did talk yesterday about the heat when we know things are seasonal. The flu dies around uh, about this time of the year. In most places, the flu starts to really show it precipitous drop. And the next thing you know, we go through the summer and in the fall, the flu will pop up again. Is that going to help this? It's possible. But at the end of the day, you're looking for... For me, it's the data. And they're all going to spin it in a certain way. Trump's going to be angry and pissed if he finds out this thing isn't as bad as they make it out to be. And the numbers, well, the oh, my God, 20 million people had it and we lost 100,000 lives. And this wasn't anything near what they were telling us. People could look at him and say, you should have known better. Shouldn't have closed down the economy. Now look at us. We're at 35% unemployment. People could freak out. On the other side of things, he's got to walk that fine line. And it's tough. It is. But in the political world that we live in now, the spin is coming. And you get a lot of people out there who are trying to spin their portion of the numbers to fit whatever political slant they want to roll out. Because unfortunately, in this tragedy... They're going to use it, and both sides are going to do it. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Remember, I just want you guys to remember. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection? Phil, did he say injection? He said injection. Okay, I just want to make sure. I didn't know if my English was good, but I, I feel that he did say injection. Just letting you guys know. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. A bunch of good stuff to stream this weekend. You got it! A lot of people fighting for the right to party while in self-isolation, and perhaps Apple TV Plus can help with that, debuting Friday the documentary film Beastie Boys Story. Also on Apple TV Plus, Chris Evans and Michelle Dockery star in the buzzy drama Defending Jacob. Netflix debuts the action thriller Extraction, starring Evans' Avengers buddy Chris Hemsworth, along with the second season of the critically acclaimed Ricky Gervais dramedy Afterlife. Saturday night on HBO, Hugh Jackman and Allison Janney star in the highly anticipated dark comedy Bad Education, and the Emmy-winning spy drama Homeland says goodbye Sunday night on Showtime. There is no movies coming out because there is none. Isn't this weird? Hollywood is... Let me tell you about the bloodbath that Hollywood is facing right now because so many of these movies are already in the can. They've spent hundreds of millions and billions of dollars making these movies, marketing these movies, They set these times out that they're going to release these films years in advance. Because of the coronavirus, it is going to, it may be unrecoverable according to deadline. Maybe unrecoverable. Some of these companies may be in serious, serious, serious trouble. It is affecting everybody. Last night with the draft. It's a perfect example. Watch the NFL draft last night. And here's a perfect snapshot of what kind of damage this has done economically. $240 million were made last year in direct revenue that went into Nashville. They had 650,000 people. They were expecting 750,000 people potentially over like a five to seven day period in Vegas to party and celebrate because that's where it was going to be. They expected the revenues to be massive, bigger than Nashville easily. 
the Bellagio had spent millions of dollars. And again, I love the draft, that pomp and circumstance of Vegas was super exciting. At the Bellagio, this is what they were going to do. When you were, so they were going to have all of the players that were hopefully going to be picked in the first round. When you were picked, you were going to get on a boat and then they were going to take you via the boat to the commissioner because they had canals there and deliver you there. That money, even though they've given the draft in 2022 to Vegas, that, that money isn't coming back. Some of those big businesses, some of those things, they're, they're struggling. And that goes for the entertainment world, too. They're, they're paying a huge price. Everybody is feeling it, minus the Clorox people and disinfectant. UV lights. I got a ton of UV lights, people, if you guys really, you know, I'm not shooting it into my body. My lizards like them. <laughs> I was telling Anthony this morning, well, if UV's the thing that's the big killer, whoo, I'm stoked. My whole house is UV. Lizards everywhere. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. And tweet at us. I was watching the draft last night. GM for the Giants in a room by himself. And then he puts a mask on. And you see it. And I was just like, that's just awkward. It was. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, it is. That's Donald Trump uh, yesterday at his press conference for the coronavirus task force. He said inject. But not him. It's doctors. Just look into it. You're such a liar, Chad. He didn't say that. No, hold on. Let's listen again. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out. So disinfect it, knocks it out. Okay, we got that. Check. In a minute. Minute. One minute. One minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Is there a way we can do this? Disinfect it, knocks it out. One minute. Is there a way we can do something like that? By injection. By injection. All right. Now my English is getting pretty good. It's more better than it was yesterday. It's way more better than it was yesterday. Let's listen again. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out. Knocks it out. In a minute. Minute. One minute. One minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Something. By injection. Injection. In- okay, I just want to make sure. I want to make sure. So when people say he didn't say that, then it's you taking him out of context. I watch the whole thing. It's what I do. It's my job. It's my J-O-B. Watch it. There it is. Up four TVs. We're up. All four carried it for a certain amount of time. But he did say that. Maker of was it Clorox or Lysol had to come out and say, "Do not inject our product." <laughs> Why they have to put warning labels on stuff? Don't do this. It's not what he said, though. It's the reaction of the two sides. Trump's an idiot. No, he's not an idiot. Trump says things. The UV light, it does kill it. But we've known that it kills lots of stuff. It's like the natural cleanser. So that we get. The other thing, eh, you know, there's no stupid questions. Well, that that was kind of a stupid question when he looked over there. 
Now, we don't need to look into something like that. Dr. Gupta? Bleach and other disinfectants used to kill viruses on surfaces and in your kitchen, doing anything with that internally, it just, doctors, right. what, what do you make? And they also said it, you know, it needs to be studied. Actually, it doesn't. We know the answer to this one. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things out there that we don't know the answers to and we need to investigate. But the idea that we would do a trial of some sort and inject some people with disinfectant and some people not and see what happens. I think everybody would know that that would be dangerous and, and counterproductive and, and not at all moving us in the right direction. No. And he's right. And not because he dislikes Trump, which he does. He's just right because it's a silly thing to do. Don't try to spin it. People make mistakes. People say stupid things all the time. It's not fake news because you don't like something that your side said that may not be the best thing doesn't make it a lie. It's the problem with our country is we've just fallen apart. And I don't get much out of these. I have to be honest with you. I don't get much out of them anymore. And it's not because this isn't important to talk about. The reality is, is... We know everything going into the conversations, I mean, the the press conference, what's going to happen, what they're going to talk about. News is 24-7, and it's nonstop. You can go to every news channel, you can go on every single social media, stuff's being leaked, things are out there, we kind of get it, the numbers are everywhere. So we, we, we get that. But at times, it's just, you know, you don't even know. every Like, you'll get some good. Like yesterday, there was some good that came out. One of the better ones, talking about the UV, talking about certain things that I thought that was really good. Not the portion that he was talking about there. But he also talked about some other good things as well. But by and large, these things are becoming, you know, it's a battle of the media because the media goats them on. And they want to be a part of this. And they play the, you know, what did they call it? Uh, uh panic porn and they fight with the president and he fights back and it's just at times just ugh. well dr fauci completely just made us feel awful again by talking about how horrible it's gonna be in the fall these press conferences or shows whatever you call that are now unwatchable they're unwatchable because you can't tell whether things are great or, or things are catastrophic so i'd rather just turn them off and focus on 1984 nca finals yeah that's jim kramer and they are and it's weird because this is the part where trump has to do his Trump thing, where he's got to be Tony Robbins. Talk about, hey, we're going to get back to normal. Talk about life is going to come back. Talk about this isn't the new normal. This is a moment in time. Talk about what we were and how we're going to get back there. And maybe even better. And then Fauci comes out and does what Fauci does. Oh, the world's going to come to an end. and There's nothing we can do about it. It's coming to an end. You guys have to accept the fact. This is the new normal for the foreseeable future. It's not. But at this moment in time, this is what it is. But it's just, it is at times. He's right. It is unwatchable at times. It's just uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what they're going to say. That's the other thing. It's like, I don't know what the media is going to ask. And you always get that one or two two journalists who ask something that has nothing to do with anything in the room. Most people want to know. Here's what people want to know. The average person. How much longer is this going to last? What are the criteria again to open up your state? How many new infections and out of those, how many of them are in contained environments? Things like nursing homes, prisons, where everybody's packed in. What are the trials looking like for plasma, hydrochloroquine, uh, a few of the other ones that they're trialing out there? Vaccine-wise, give us the straight skinny, because we're hearing more and more every day, and we're reading more and more every day, that this is a hard thing to find a vaccination for. Talk about herd immunity. We want to know those details, and and I and here's the thing, Burks and Fauci are very interesting because Fauci's matter of fact, Burks is more political, a little bit more upbeat. That's why she's pretty much always there. Fauci's not always there, but Burks is because she understands, she plays the political game in a much better way than Fauci does, 
And I'm fine with that. Fauci can overestimate things. Got zero problems with that. I want to hear what he has to say so I can juxtapose the two of we're going to get back to this in two weeks and we're maybe never going to come back somewhere in there is the real answer. And each state's going to have to handle that. Case in point, Georgia today supposed to be opening up. Don't know if that's a good thing or not. Here's the mayor of Atlanta. Those are the things that we need to be thinking about as leaders and being creative with our budgets to find ways to allow people to feel comfortable staying at home. Uh, But to open up our state today is irresponsible. That is uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mayor of Atlanta. And I don't know how many people are even going to go out. And I don't know how many businesses are going to open up. Because I think there's several businesses out there in Atlanta that may not even open up, even with the opportunity to go out and do some things. And business owners are fighting their own conscience of whether or not to open up or not to open up. To make an assumption that we are out of the woods is not based on anything other than a desire to open up businesses. And what I believe is that there are some who are willing to sacrifice lives for the sake of the economy. And that's unacceptable to me. (sighs) No, I, uh, I, I don't know what the answer is. I think everybody's got to search their own conscience when it comes to, what they want to do you don't want to put other people at risk that we know nobody wants to do that but at this point in time with the antibody tests that are coming out and people are looking around and saying to themselves uh where where would you even know if you caught it like i the, the wisconsin thing they are now tracing 21 people catching the coronavirus to people voting in the wisconsin primary i'm like how would you know is that the only place you went in the last three weeks? Because then I'd be like, all right, there, you caught it there. But if you've gone to 50 other things where you've had 50 other opportunities to come in contact with 50 other objects and or human beings in the last three weeks, there's a good chance you may not have caught it standing in line to vote. It's crazy. It's weird. But it's not the new normal. We will get back to normal. I promise you that. We'll get back. It's going to take a while. Some states will bounce back quicker. Some industries will bounce back quicker. Some industries are going to be forever changed. And there will be good that comes out of this, not just on the medical pandemic CDC side of things, but also the business aspect of the world and the way that maybe we do business. And let's be honest. The climate, a little benefit here. Air is better. Animals are coming back in some places. The water is cleaner in certain areas. It's not a bad thing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson, show us your Twitter. You could tweet at me. Lightstream. So you're sitting at home, and every day you're like, oh, the mailman's here. It's something all that. I got something to do. Excuse me, mail person. So you go to the mail that has been delivered, and you open up said mail, and you say to yourself, self? Look at my credit cards. Wow, I'm paying 19% on this, 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 this. How about this? My friends over at Lightstream want to help you quickly roll those balances from your multiple credit cards into a single monthly loan payment. You can get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay, much lower than the national average, uh, which is, all right, so you ready for this, 19% APR. Oh, what's lower? Saving you 14%? Yeah, big time. Plus, no fees. Application is quick and easy. You can do it online. Do it right from your phone. You can even get the money as early as the same day you apply. Now, to get this special interest rate discount, and the only way to get this, and even a better special interest rate discount for being my listener, I'm going to save you more money. Go to lightstream.com slash Benson. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. Chad Benson Show. Get over it. 
It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? All right, all right, all right. Try, yay. NFL draft. Trending. Big time. Huge. Some of the names people look up. Who's this guy? Isaiah Simmons. Who, 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 who's this? Who's Jerry Judy? I like Jerry Judy. I think, he's a, I think he's a beast. Illinois, stay-at-home order. They got another 30 days. Justin Herbert or Bear? Not quite sure. I think it's Herbert. Picked by the Los Angeles Chargers. Fred the Godson passed away, 35. A lyricist and rapper from the coronavirus. Tua Tungavaloa. Trending. But number one trending thing is coronavirus tips. 10 million ser- uh, searches. That was huge. 10 million searches. Astronaut Scott Kelly offering all kinds of coronavirus lockdown tips and keeping kids motivated to study. Jack, my son, is not motivated at all to study. Just zero motivation to study. Like, z- none. Because his routine's been broken and he feels like it's summer. So for the next couple weeks, he's going back with his mom. Then he'll come back out here with me. And, yeah. So he's done okay, but, ooh, goodness me. Goodness me. Ooh, I can see why kids feel that way. And it's so weird, too, because when my brother's here, their homework that they were given, their stuff that they were assigned, it would be like 40 minutes. Jax gets a whole day's worth of work. And then the, he's got a literacy thing, and his teacher read the book, like read it out loud. And the kids have to sit there and listen to her drawn on and on. Oh, it's just, I'm like, isn't there a movie for this? <laughs> Not very nice, Chad. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Let's take a look at Twitter. How to spot a redneck? Inject disinfectant. By the way, Trump never said to inject disinfect. That's where the right is going to twist. He never said to inject disinfect. He was talking to the doctors. Can we look at something like that as far as an injection? He never said for you, but you have to put that kind of warning apparently out there to some people because otherwise they're going to do something stupid. Tide Pod president. (laughs) Chad. Oh, my. The 11th deadly plague. Oh, my Lord. That really. It's the, he did. He used the word injection. I'm just letting you guys know. He absolutely used the word injection. Did he say that you should inject? And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection? He didn't say that. All right. Well, the guy who sounds like Trump, who's occupying the space that Trump's in, who happened to be wearing the same outfit as Trump, that happened to be giving a press conference, said something. Now, did he say personally, you should inject this stuff? No. But the word injection was used there. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Now, kids, you know. What is trending? Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 
And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. But the whole concept of the light, the way it kills it in one minute, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. Yeah, that is pretty powerful. That is it, is it called a sun? Is that is that you ultra? Chad, you're being mean to the president. No, what he said was stupid, right? And I think the whole thought process of the whole disinfectant thing that people are freaking out about, we put it on our Facebook page. First of all, what he said was injection, right? And it's so hilarious the way that Trump, supporters react settle down he did say the word injection and they're attacking me because we thought it was funny we put it on our facebook page about 150,000 followers and they're just like they're just talking about how horrible oh you're a liberal uh and they're just uneducated liberal and they come after and i just laugh my ass off Oh, they would never recommend. He would never recommend anything. Well, no, he just said we should have the doctors look at that. Somebody just said <laughs> he meant to say antibiotics. <laughs> I'm like, had you guys thought about using antibiotics on people? <laughs> yeah, you have. You've thought that. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know. Stop trying to cover up for his goof up. He's a human being. He says stuff. And sometimes, here's the beauty of Trump, why we love him and why he drives everybody crazy at times. Who People who are independent, open-minded, free-thinking individuals. Is, he drives us crazy because he says stuff like this, right? He drives us crazy because he says things like what he just said. And tweets out stuff that sometimes you just shake your head about. But at the same time, we love him because he says stuff like this. I can't tell you what's going to happen. We have a sleepy guy in a basement of a house that the press is giving a free pass to. He's not moving around. He's not moving too much. And then I watch what the press does to the Republican Party and to me in particular. We had the greatest economy ever put together. We were doing numbers the likes of which we've never done. African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American. I can't tell you what's going to happen. We have a sleepy guy in a basement of a house. Talking about Biden in the election. And I was laughing. In the same press conference, he says, talking about disinfectant and these things and, and... you know, UV rays and all of that stuff. Then two minutes later, he's, we got a sleepy guy in a basement. <laughs> and you're like, that's why we love him. We can, you can both get frustrated and laugh, but nobody's perfect. There's like one perfect person to walk the earth. It ain't this guy. Okay. It ain't this cat. I want my president to succeed. In saying that, If he screws up, says something asinine, stupid, call him on it. Do the same thing with president before him, Obama, the president before him, Bush. Do the same thing for the next president, whether it's Trump for another four years or that sleepy guy in the basement. If he says something stupid, call him out on it. If he does something good, give him an attaboy. Speaking of Biden, <laughs> the report out yesterday, this is awesome, that bin Laden wanted to kill and assassinate, even had the person picked out who was going to do the assassination of then-President Barack Obama because they thought Biden was so incompetent that he would blow everything up as far as the economy and the entire situation would go to hell in a handbasket and America would crumble. <laughs> That's hilarious. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. 
Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. Biden doing Biden stuff. Again, we have an election coming up. Let's not forget that. Who is going to be his running mate? Everybody has thrown their hat out there. I think there's three or four people that are really the front runners. Kamala Harris. To the lack of leadership that this president has provided from day one. He rejected information he received from the American intelligence community. He minimized the seriousness of this. I believe there were 34 times he went on camera between January and early March and basically minimized the seriousness of the coronavirus and its impact on our country. He called it a hoax. He has tried to muzzle public health experts. And this is who he is. And that's why we have looked to Joe Biden for leadership in November. I don't know if that's a good idea. But that's what the Democrats have. I don't think it's going to be Kamala. I mean, she's the... Because he's already said he's going to have a female as his running mate. So that we know. She is... It's it's a weird relationship, right? Because she's... African American, and at the same time, she gets a lot of blowback in the African American community because of when she was, you know, the attorney general, how hard she was on criminals, in particular people who, uh, you know, drug dealers and people who smoke weed and stuff, sitting in jail, partly because of her and the way that she, you know, she wanted to be tough on crime, and 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 he doesn't, he's got the black vote. but they want to check boxes. And I don't think she's an incompetent woman at all. I just don't think she's very comfortable. She's very awkward, right? She's like, she's, there's an, you ever met those people where you don't know, like, they want to shake your hand and then they kind of want to fist bump you or that you want to hug you. And it's, it's just, they, you put out your right hand, they put out their right hand and uh, their left hand and you put out your, it's, that's kind of what it feels like with her. Elizabeth Warren, Mm, Democrats, as much as, They, like Elizabeth, the reality is she's 70-something. They don't want another older person. Stacey Abrams, who is lobbying for the job on a daily basis, she doesn't have enough experience. Sorry, just being honest. And then you've got who I think is the front runner is Gretchen Whitmer of Michigan. That would help in Michigan. A lot of times you pick vice presidents based on the help that you're going to get from a particular state, especially if that person's popular in the state. She's pretty popular right now, though she's unpopular with the state home orders, but she was doing an okay job and they elected her. So do I think that that is the front runner because he, that would help in Michigan? I do think that will help in Michigan. So that's my guess is it's going to be her. But who knows with Biden? He may pick a lamp. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. And, and, and you know, here's a perfect example uh, of what she said there and how stuff can get twisted. You know, when Trump came out and talked about this virus, remember... We're all supposed to pay attention to the World Health Organization, the WHO. The WHO talked about, eh, this isn't really a big deal, can't transfer the way it does. They downplayed it as well. And if we were going by that, then why should anybody worry? Well, that was a lie. That ended up being absolutely blown up. And, of course, China and the WHO were, and not the band, World Health Organization, Because everybody seems to want to cater to China. There's a lot of countries that should be sending China a bill. Absolutely. There's a ton of countries right now that should be looking at China saying, you're going to get a bill. It's coming. Speaking of China, they've opened up some places. I'm real happy to see like people at least uh, you know keeping their distance, getting around, going going about their day. But just two weeks after the reopening, and some here are closing the gap on social distancing. Many stores and restaurants keeping people from coming inside, but that's not stopping crowds like this one from standing shoulder to shoulder waiting outside for their orders. Yeah. Short memory. We have a short 
memory. Human beings do. You will see a spike there. It's going to happen, which means a second wave. And the second wave, if you, you know, study of history, the the second wave was the deadliest of the flu pandemic in 1970, 1917, which was the Spanish flu. And that one was the deadliest of the waves. We we know what's coming now. We're, they didn't really kind of get what was going on there. We're a little bit more advanced than they were. So... That's the question I think a lot of people have for governors. I know the governors I've talked to, they don't really have an answer of, okay, so when you start to loosen these restrictions, and what business owners, and I'm sure most of you want to know, is when people go back to work, when people start to get back in the groove of things, and maybe through the summer, because if you think this is seasonal, it's going to follow the flu-like pattern, it's going to drop off, in the summertime, which is approaching. I mean, we're almost in May. It's heating up minus where producer Phil is, but I'm out here in Phoenix. It's going to be 100 today. In fact, for the next eight days, it's going to be hovering right around 100 to 104. Then we'll have a few more down days, but the rest, that we could see hundreds all the way through till October. But then what happens? As you loosen the restrictions, there's going to be a spike. What's the difference between a spike and a second wave? Because if we have a spike in an area for like like a nursing home, does that mean do we have to shut everything down again? Is there a, a limit where you say, look, if it's under X amount, we can continue if it gets over a certain part? I think that's a lot of the questions that aren't being asked and aren't being answered is, you know, there's going to be a spike. What's the true difference between a spike and a second wave? How do we prepare people in such a way to understand that, yeah, there's going to be a spike, but understand that as long as we follow some of these, we're going to continue to allow people to have more and more of their day-to-day life back into the way it was without having to worry that, because, you know, there's going to be some who are much more lax, see Atlanta, And some who are going to be like, the minute there's one case, everybody's got to go back indoors. And we can't have a stop start in our economy. That that's that's not that's not good for anybody. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson show is your Twitter. But the FDA has just released something. (laughs) We'll talk about that straight ahead. Chad Benson show. need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Fui is the fearless leader. Fui. Fui, fui, and double fui. Fui is your language. It is a family show, remember? Fui is the family too. Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. New hope for those who have recovered now cautiously armed with antibodies. Dr. Dara Cass returning to work after recovering from COVID-19. When you're affected by the virus that's also affecting your patients, you come back into work with a sense of camaraderie and identity that you didn't have before. And right now you need proof of a positive COVID test in order to get the antibodies test. But soon the Red Cross will allow people who think they've had coronavirus to also get the antibodies test. All right, so... Antibodies test. Who wants one? I think I've taken my doctor has has them. So I think I'm going to take mine next week because I feel like I've already had it. You don't know. And the majority of people have no idea if they've had it. And that's being shown in several studies. Came out. One came out from USC the other day, and they believe up to 55% more people have actually had it were asymptomatic or showed very little signs of any real issues. New York, it's crazy. 
News the virus may have spread more widely in New York than we ever thought. A preliminary statewide antibody study showing 14 percent of state residents may have had it. The numbers in New York City even higher, more than 21 percent. Yeah, so they believe it's closing in on about 2 million people that have, may have already had this. And you start asking the question, what does herd immunity start to look like different for different diseases as far as viruses so some viruses it's you have to get to right around 50 some you have to get well into the 70s or 80s this is going to be a little bit tricky because nobody really knows what herd immunity looks like on this That's kind of what you want, though, is that herd immunity. That, at the end of the day, is when they look at what happened with the Spanish flu and why it didn't become some sort of seasonal killing machine is two things happen. The first, when it it clones itself, it mutates. The copy is never as strong as as the original. It's like a sequel. Very rarely is the original uh, outdone by sequels. The second thing is, is so many people have built up an immunity. The ones who were weak and 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 died, they they died, and the stronger ones who survived it uh, build up such an immunity that it's that it really had nowhere to go. So it died out. Is it possible that can happen with this one? Of course, herd immunity is what you strive for. If you're not going to have a vaccine, and we don't know if we'll get a vaccine from that. Speaking of treatments and vaccines. The FDA said there have been reports of serious heart rhythm problems in coronavirus patients treated with the anti-malaria drug hydroxychloroquine. So far, hydroxychloroquine has not been shown to be safe and effective for treating or preventing COVID-19. And a study here in New York showed no statistically significant difference in patients who took it or not. Patients who take the drug to treat malaria or autoimmune conditions should keep taking it. But the FDA said coronavirus carriers should only take it as part of a supervised clinical trial. Yeah. So people have been taking it. It showed some success in some. We haven't seen the full detail report. I think that was supposed to come out the other day and has since been delayed. And they're looking at a few other treatments, the plaza treatment. I know there's Gilead's got a treatment as well. They're trying and there's a lot of them that they're trying out there. And the vaccine side of things is it's slow. As fast as they're working, this is a hard, if, like I've read several reports and I've listened to several doctors on, you you know, I've gone to YouTube and watched lectures as they talk about this, that this is a very hard one to replicate. Some are very easy to replicate and get it, get it ready to start gearing towards a vaccine. Some things are more complex. This one is on the higher end of the vaccine world. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show Twitter. It's Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The Great Depression in the 1930s, the unemployment rate was 25%. If one out of four of your neighbors is out of work, 25% unemployment rate, that's a Great Depression. Don't forget the Great Recession we just had a decade ago, unemployment only got to 10%. And now we're certainly going much, much higher than that. Yeah, it's if this goes on much longer in the way that we currently have it another 60 days let's say it's a depression i think we're in a depression but i think we could bounce out of it and get into a a normal recession and and get back to like 15 or maybe 10 percent unemployment but that would be us opening up by at least may 15th most of the states and i just don't see that happening i don't Crazier things have happened. 
you know, when we talk about the, the Spanish flu, because that's the one that we everybody harkens back to because that was a global pandemic and the sites that we've never seen before and the numbers we've never seen before. But it literally disappeared. That was what's so weird. Like March, even here in America, they had thousands of people dying. And by mid-April, it had almost vanished completely. But we're in a situation that's different. Globally, we're tied together in ways that we've never been tied together before. And you look at this and you say, yeah, I mean, I guess you would. This is this is definitely worse than the Great Recession. And we are at that point. Where. We're right on the edge of a depression. Is it only going to be a horrific second quarter economically? And then we bounce back. That's that's something that, you know, we can hope for. In the Great Depression, industrial production fell like 40 percent. In the Great Recession, a decade ago, industrial production fell 20 percent. So far right now, we've only we've only fallen like 5 percent. And that was reported out for the month of March. Somewhere in the second quarter, it's not impossible that that reaches bottom. But I mean, we're not out of the woods. This is going to take a good year to get over. And that's being optimistic. Yeah. That is uh, Chris Rupke, financial economist. And, and, and I I was talking to an economist yesterday who he handles uh, – he's an economist, but he's also he, – he, he has a fund, very well-to-do gentleman who's very successful. And we've been going back and forth about the financials and looking at certain things and, you know, GDP and how much we're going to lose and where we might get back to. And he painted several different pictures, and but we were both in agreement – Every month that we lose, it's probably 12 months to get back. So we've lost a month and a half. In theory, by the fourth quarter next year, if all things were awesome and we started taking off, say, mid-May, we'd probably get back to where we were. If we go through June... And into July, you're looking at 24 to 36 months. And then you've got to think about what happens if we go out, start living our lives, rock and rolling, things are going good, blah, 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 blah. And then the second wave comes and we have to shut everything down again. That shutting things down on a second occasion is not only worse than this, what you're going to, and you talk to a lot of business owners who are in that weird position of trying to figure out, do they hang on? How much longer can they hang on? Okay, I think we can get out of this and we could start being up and running by June 1st and really going, how much business is going to come back? But what if it comes back and the second wave ends up, you know, the spike ends up being a second wave and they shut us down again? At that point, I think we lose far more than we've lost already because i think you're going to find a lot of people especially small business owners that are just going to be throwing in the towel saying i'm i'm gonna i can't afford this anymore 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter feel free to tweet at me i found this interesting mark cuban who i find very interesting smart dude obviously he's a very interesting guy risk taker talking about government unemployment and the whole nine yards Depending on the circumstances you're in, you've just got to be aware of all the opportunities available to you. It's horrific that we've had 25 million plus people lose their job. But, you know, there are services in place. And I think the one message going into this, historically, I lean libertarian and I've been against bigger government or government intruding to everything we do. But you know what? This is the time everybody needs to just recognize you pay your taxes. And if there's a government program available to you, whether it's PPP or whether it's unemployment insurance, you have to really step up and take advantage of it yeah well that's what it's there for and i'm against the intrusion of government we've had way too many of these but i also understand why we need government 
It's there to handle situations like this. They're trying to do the best they can. You put life before the economy. Also recognizing that in the economy and the destruction of an economy, you will find out that you're going to lose lives there. So you walk a fine balance. But then you have to start thinking, at what point do you say, all right, that's enough? Because the amount of money we're printing, the debt we're getting into, could push us in another direction that for decades and decades we're going to feel the impact. Is it possible we've changed the entire political equation in this country? Yeah, it's very possible. We, we've never seen anything like this. You know, on one hand, it's scary to think that we're printing as much money and taking as much debt on as we are. But on the other hand, what's the alternative? It's horrific to think about. It. So, you know, sometimes you just got to take a chance. And I think that's where we are. Economists will be writing about this for centuries. I think when we can get to the other side, get to America 2.0, then I think positive things will start to happen. We'll be in a better position economically and medically. And then we can start making some decisions on how we deal with taxes and right. debt and those types of things. But I think once we get through this initial hurdle, things are going to be okay. Yeah, and I agree. And I'm very optimistic that things are going to be okay. And I'm very optimistic that we've learned not only what we need to be looking for and how we need to take certain things on in the future, but also we're going to come out of this with new ways to work. We're going to develop new strategies for companies there's going to be some winners out of this and there's going to be a lot of losers out of this and then the i look outside and i'm thinking man the air is beautiful right shows you one thing how fast the planet can jump back doesn't it it took a month for people not to drive and for no diesel engines in the canals in Venice to start to see how fast. I want to see what this impact looks like in when they do a study in six months or a year. I want to see. That'll be interesting. But I do know we're going to come back. It's going to be a, a hard, hard struggle. And, 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 and even though I was talking earlier about small business and if we went into a second wave and they had to shut down again – a majority of small businesses, I think, are going to chuck it in. And several of the small business owners I know, friends of mine, and people I've partnered with in other projects in the past, have said they'll chuck it in. It doesn't mean they're done. It just means this venture at this moment in this time is done. Entrepreneurs will always be entrepreneurial. And that's what you need. That spirit, especially here in America, that spirit's going nowhere. Entrepreneurs will always look for opportunity. And they also know when to say, oh, we've had enough. I'm not giving up. I'm giving up on this right now because this is me throwing money that's good after bad money at this point in time. I don't need to do that. So that will happen. But we're going to have a, this is going to be one of those things where it's going to be like losing weight. We'd love to have that pill that you take overnight. You wake up tomorrow, you have six pack abs, you know, get bit by that spider. So the Spider-Man wakes up, yoked, he's ripped, he's got a six-pack. day before he didn't, that doesn't happen. This is doing it the right way, which is going to be, we're going to add a little bit here, we're going to add a little bit there, we're going to add a little bit here, we're going to add a little bit there. And first, we'll have a good rush. You know, that first two weeks where you're like, man, I dropped, you know, 15 pounds in, in three weeks. And then all of a sudden, it starts to come off a little slower and a little slower. We'll have that. We'll have a nice rush, and then it'll be a slog that's slower. And I think this is where Trump will make his mark. Not everything with Obama was bad as much as the people on the right would think. No, no, there was a lot of good Obama did. I, I, I didn't dislike Obama, but I thought when it came to the economy— he never really took the, you know, he never really said, all right, let's get this thing going. He never, he never you know, cracked the whip and used the, hey, we got, let's just, let's, let's do this. Let's get this thing going. Let's motor. Let's see what this beast can do. And I think Trump has that. And that's where, despite all the craziness, that's the guy that you want there at that time, at that moment which I think bodes well for him during his re-election. Because people are going to look and go, mm, he didn't handle this very well, but I don't know if I trust oh, 
you know, the Obama protege, Biden, to unleash this beast the way that Trump would. And in a weird way, a great economy would help him, but an economy that is crashing based on something he had nothing to do with Trump may also be his helper. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. My pillow's giving you something amazing. Oh, Chad, tell us more. So Mike Lindell, as you guys know, Rag to Riches story. He's got a book out. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But he decided, hey, we're going to... Uh, We've got big manufacturing opportunities. We're, we're going to get rid of all of our products. We're going to switch our production line over and start making masks for hospitals. So they've done that. Now they get, need to get rid of all of their MyPillow stuff. So they're giving everybody the opportunity to buy one, get one free. Don't worry. They're going to produce MyPillow stuff in the future. But they want to do this because, hey, we're all in this together. So every MyPillow product is to buy one, get one free. The Supima MyPillows, the Giza towels and sheets, which are amazing. The MyPillow towels, the Roll and Go Anywheres, the duvet covers, all of them are buy one, get one free. 60-day money-back guarantee, a 10-year warranty, and everything's made right here in the U.S. of A. Now, I told you you wrote a book. When you go to MyPillow.com and you go to the radio listener special, you type in code Benson. On the way out, if you get his book, really cool book, great cover, too. It's kind of neat. It's like 3D. When you do that, he's going to ship everything for free and give you a $25 gift card for your next purchase. It's that simple. Go to MyPillow.com, MyPillow.com. Use that promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Take a fake news break. Check, 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 check out the really important news of the day at our website, chadbensonshow.com. Once there, click on Chad's free podcast and get real. The Chad Benson Show, where truth and the American way live. Print free. Okay, here we go. With the first pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Joe Burrow went number one. Super excited. Joe Burrow. He's now a Bengal. And the first thing he did was lie. You know, I knew I was going to have a really good season because I knew, you know, we had really good players coming back. I had great coaches um, and we were going to re- work really, really hard to do it. But to, to jump up to number one overall is is crazy to me. Um, but it's a, gr- it's a dream come true. Yeah, you're lying. Nobody says, you know what I want to be as a kid? A Bengal. Uh, to a tongue of Aloha. The guy was favored to win the Heisman last year, and it was on his way to doing that, maybe leaving Alabama to another national championship before he got hurt. Where'd he go? With the fifth pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select to a tongue of Aloha. Quarterback, Alabama. Did you not know what position he played, Roger Goodell? All in all, it was an interesting, weird night to watch the way that they handled the NFL draft because it was supposed to be in Vegas. And, you know, you think about this for, for just a sec. It could get away from all the coronavirus and the wildness, even though that we know that that's what caused this. The amount of money that Las Vegas lost because they were going to host it. They were expecting about 700 plus thousand people there. But for these kids, and they're kids, they're 20, 21 years old. They don't get that back. They don't get the redo next year when it's in Los Angeles and the red carpet. They were supposed to. This was, you don't get, you're number one. You're pick number one. And you don't get to enjoy it. I mean, the Bellagio had set it up because they have canals in and out of the Bellagio. where And they would built special ones where they were going to put the, the draft. The players were going to be drafted. They were going to get on like a gondola, and then it was going to take them and ferry them to Roger Goodell. You don't get that back. Instead, you're sitting in your house, and some of the houses, I've got to be honest, Joe Burrow's family, just saying. Just saying. Didn't look great. 323-538-2423, at Chet Benson shows your Twitter You could tweet at me. You could text the program as well. Who likes coffee? If that's you, good news. 
for many of us. Our day begins with a cup of coffee, and it turns out that coffee can not only get you going, but it may even lengthen your life. But there's a catch. The coffee needs to be brewed with a filter. Researchers say unfiltered coffee contains substances which increase cholesterol. They say using a filter removes these substances and makes heart attacks and premature death less likely. Results of the study are published in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology. It's another one of those studies. And like, are, are we? Do I? Is this a study? I believe because like, is this like the egg study? We told me it was awful. Then you told me it was good. Then you're telling me it's bad again. But it could be good. Genetics, just like with so much that's going on right now with the coronavirus, there's a certain genetic complex that goes on with every human being the dna is different your genetics are totally different as far as you know your family your genes the whole nine yards i think genetics has a bigger say into what you do because there's always that person who's 99 they smoke three packs of cigarettes a day and eat a pound of bacon they turn 100 and they don't look like they're gonna die anytime soon and it's genetics but enjoy your coffee i enjoy my tea I think it's brewed with a filter, although not sure. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I would like you to speak to the medical doctors to see if there's any way that you can apply light and heat to cure. You know, if you could, and maybe you can, maybe you can't. Again, I say maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor. He's not a doctor. He's not. Some of the craziness yesterday, and there's craziness, too, on, like, social media. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs, and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that. So that. So you heard what he said there, right? You, we, we all heard the injection. So this is some of the craziness on our Facebook page. So sad. He never mentioned that. What's wrong with this country? Get rid of all these leftist, stupid journalists. Fake and twisted facts. This is ridiculous. He did not say that people should do this. He said doctors were exploring something like this. You're a typical liberal. It's fake news. The press has no integrity. Ignore these morons. A mother misleading statement. He did not suggest you drink Lysol or bleach. No, he said he says maybe you can look into that. Well, he did say maybe you, not like he was going to look into it. But come on. I was telling producer Anthony before the show started that people in my business are now having to run around and try to figure out, okay, is uh, how, how do we spin this? How do we spin? Like, how do I spin this? And and I'm like, I talked to a couple of my buddies who do this on a very large level as well. And I'm like, you don't. You just come out. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why can't you do that? That's the beauty of the world that we live in. He's not Yahweh, right? He's not God. He's a human being. It was a stupid thing to say. When it comes to the business side of thing, I listen to Trump all day, right? When it comes to that business side of stuff, I listen to it. I listen to him. I like the way he's handled the the business side of stuff. This was not his finest moment. Just wasn't. And it's crazy how, like, you have to agree with everything. That's the problem with the country right now. Is we can't have actual, any kind of, 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 of conversation about real things that we disagree about without saying, if you disagree about one thing, then you throw everything away. 
right? It, you have to 100% be here. I get it every day. You have to pick a side. I don't have to pick anything. It's the beauty of the world that I live in. It's the way the Constitution is driven up. I don't have, it didn't say red or blue in the Constitution. I'm independent. When Trump does something good, I say it. When he does something bad or stupid, I'll say it. I'll call him out. I don't have to pick a side. I don't do any of that stuff. It's nuts. He said something stupid. People, you can laugh at it. It doesn't weaken him. That's the thing that people think. It somehow weakens him. Like, it, you should be a, I want my president to succeed. Here's the funny thing. Those same people that tell me you should be behind our president, you should want him to succeed, absolutely I want him to succeed. And if it was Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, I'd want them to succeed. And if they did something stupid or, or, or idiotic, I'd say it. But those same people, if it was another person that was president, would say all the same things that I've said right here, but hope for failure. That's not American. The people on the left who want him to fail, and there are plenty of them out there, that's not American. Wanting our president to fail is not something you should want. It's like wanting your pilot to crash the plane because you don't like your pilot. That's stupid. Well, I'll show you. You should want him to succeed. That's so sad, though. Fake news. He never said that. No, he said it. That's not real. Are you like I again? We we have this conversation at least once a week. What I said and what you heard. What the president said and what you heard. And that's on both sides of the aisle. Yes, you can take things out of context. Trump wasn't suggesting that everybody go out and get bleach, Clorox, disinfectant, and shoot it up. But did he say, you guys should look into this? Injecting? Talk about light and stuff? Yeah, he did. He did. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Feel free to tweet at me. You can text the program as well. So today, Georgia, I thought Kemp would step back. I did. I thought he would step back a little bit from trying to open up Georgia, and Georgia's numbers are growing, and uh, there's going to be – and the weird thing is there's – I don't even know how many things are going to open up. I have no idea. Even Trump is not thrilled by it. I had a good talk with the governor of Georgia. I didn't like the fact that he's leaving certain things. I want the states to open more than he does, much more than he does. But I didn't like to see spas, beauty parlors at this early stage, nor did the doctors. Is that a correct statement, Deborah? I didn't like to see spas opening. I didn't like to see a lot of things happening. And I wasn't happy with it. And I wasn't happy with Brian Kemp. I wasn't at all happy. And I could have done something about it if I wanted to. But I'm saying let the governors do it. But I wasn't happy with Brian Kemp. I get that. Are some of them going to open? I think some of them will. Are some of them not going to open? I think there's going to be a lot of people that say no. People are worried. People are scared. People are also in a situation where they're not sure what to believe, what not to believe, You see somebody who's got a mask on and rubber gloves. Well, the rubber gloves aren't really, unless you're going to change your gloves every time, they're kind of useless. But there's a certain sense of safety that we think some of these things are going to bring us. Kind of like the TSA. The TSA is a placebo effect. In your mind, you think, oh, well, I got to take my shoes off and put all my stuff here. But the the reality is, is every year, They do those studies and like 97% of things that shouldn't be on an airplane get by. And you're like, well, that's great. There's a certain sense that you see somebody with gloves and a mask on that somehow they're extra protected and maybe that's going to help. 
But you have so much information that contradicts other information, and this information says that, and this study over here says people don't know what to do. So then what they do is they don't do anything. And polls are starting to say, yeah, hold on a second. 72% of Americans think moving too quickly to loosen stay-at-home orders is a greater threat to the country than moving too slowly. This from a new ABC News Ipsos poll. Most Republicans and Democrats feel the restrictions are responsible, life-saving actions. 80% say if restrictions were lifted tomorrow, they are unlikely to go to public places that draw crowds. Which I could totally see. A lot of people are going to be worried about going to public places, even when we get to a point where we've got a a treatment that has shown to be very successful in mitigating the damage this does to 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 people's bodies and the amount of time that you're you you would be sick. And even then there is this psychological aspect that we've talked about on numerous occasions that some people aren't going to feel really comfortable going out into crowds, sporting events, shopping malls, flying, doing those things until there's a vaccine. It's going to take a good portion, I think of America to get back into the flow of getting out there and working it. That's 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 the psyche. And part of that is because we're inundated by the media 24 seven that this is the deadliest thing in the world. And you get it. It's over. It's done. You're not going to survive. Not. And that's untrue as well. That's very much untrue. And we're finding out as we look at this more and more that hold on a second. This isn't really as deadly as people thought. While it is still deadlier, remember it casts a wider net than the flu does. And yes, it's a little bit deadlier than the flu. But if we're starting to see the antibodies test come back and seeing the amount of numbers of people that may have already had this thing and never even knew they had it, that 2 3 4% you see as far as the, the death rate, mortality rate, starts to shrink dramatically. And that's, that's good news. That is. That is good news. How's that good news? Because somebody questioned that yesterday. I posted some on Twitter about this. And they're like, so should that make the people or healthcare feel better that it's that it's, you know, only half of one percent as I'm like, as opposed to three or four percent? Yes, absolutely. They should feel better about that. We should all feel better about that. Do you want it to be 10 percent? Would that make you feel better? And for a lot of people, what they want is and you see this now if this thing turns out to be at the end of the day something that is only three you know point three percent is the mortality rate people are going to ask questions was it worth it the economy was it worth it this wasn't anything more than the flu no it was deadlier than the flu because of the reach it has In saying that, I understand why politicians flip certain things in certain ways and want you to look at it in a certain way because it's going to help there politically. Because if you look up and this thing, tend, you know, Trump, at the end of the day, take away the economy anymore. That doesn't nobody. Nobody. Mine is Nancy Pelosi. Nobody's blaming Trump for the economy. Nobody is. He's going to be reelected or lose based on the next several weeks and months of how he handles this. We're we're over 50,000 now. How much longer is this going to go on? It's starting to get warmer. They did talk yesterday about the heat. When we know things are seasonal, the flu dies around uh, about this time of the year. Most places, the flu starts to really show it precipitous drop, and the next thing you know, we go through the summer, and in the fall, the flu will pop up again. Is that going to help this? It's possible. But at the end of the day, you're looking for, for me, it's the data. And they're all going to spin it in a certain way. 
Trump's going to be angry and pissed if he finds out this thing isn't as bad as they make it out to be in the numbers. Well, oh, my God, 20 million people had it and we lost 100,000 lives. And this wasn't anything near what they were telling us. People can look at him and say, you should have known better. Shouldn't have closed down the economy. Now look at us. We're at 35% unemployment. People could freak out. And the other side of things, he's got to walk that fine line. And it's tough. It is. But in the political world that we live in now, the spin is coming. And you get a lot of people out there who are trying to spin their portion of the numbers to fit whatever political slant they want to roll out. Because unfortunately, in this tragedy... They're going to use it, and both sides are going to do it. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Remember, I just want you guys to remember. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection? Phil, did he say injection? He said injection. Okay, I just want to make sure. I didn't know if my English was good, but I, I feel that he did say injection. Just letting you guys know. It's the Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. It's the Chad Benson Show. The White House is accusing the media of taking President Trump out of context after he brainstormed whether light treatments and disinfectants could be used on coronavirus patients. Press Secretary Kylie McEnany said in a statement, President Trump has repeatedly said that Americans should consult with medical doctors regarding coronavirus treatment. The president's comments have drawn widespread backlash, with health experts and the makers of cleaning products warning against attempting what the president described. Yeah. Of course, it's taken out of context, but he did say it. But he didn't say for you to do it at home. Here's the thing. When you build an atmosphere that's almost cult-like in some ways, people will also misinterpret even though they're your supporters. That's all we're saying. You're part of that evil liberal media. Whatever. Call me whatever the hell you want. I know what he said. And I know that the left is going to paint it a certain way and the right's going to paint it another way. I think I know what he meant was, have you guys tried this? Could you do something like this? You guys, meaning doctors, not people at home. The problem is sometimes we have to save other people from themselves, which is something I don't know if I'd be all about, but whatever. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your na- is your is the name to check out on the old Twitter. Speaking of names, I want to go through this. So, producer Phil, I want to talk to you right now about popular names around the world. And right now, names that are being used. Because you're Phil, I'm Chad. We got Anthony. It's pretty, pretty base. Alias is one. Arson. Awesome. These are all names that have been used. Boss. Chief is cool. I like Chief. That's kind of a neat name. Celebrity. How about this? Diary. Envy. These are all names that are popping up that are quite gamble. That's okay. It would be cool. But here's the thing. If you get a cool name or a weird name, you've got to be something cool to back it up. Right? If you're Chief, you've got to be something cool. 300-pound dude sitting in his mom's basement. Mm, no. Like a model, you're like, well, that guy's called Chief. That's a cool name. Gorgeous. Nine girls were named Gorgeous in 2000. And now that's gone up to 27 in the last two years. There's also Pretty, Beauty, and Beautiful. Havoc, Indica, and Sativa. Kinda. <laughs> This one I didn't get. Shanty. Named after a rickety old shack? Maybe we shouldn't save everybody. Romance and Trigger. This is my kid, Trigger. My other kid. Gamble. My other kid, Chief. 323-538-2423. 
At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter shanty. This is my kid lean to. <laughs> this is our daughter squatting. Have a good weekend. Be good to each other. Smile. We're going to get through this. We're going to have fun doing it because that's what we do here. We'll do it again on Monday. As always, night night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.